Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're gonna be talking about how we can create a method to search for an object inside of a list of these objects. So in this situation, we're going to have a list of users and we wanna search for a particular user. Now, there may be a method inside of the list class that would allow us to do something like this, but I'm going to be showing you guys just how to basically iterate through the list and comparing objects and it should be pretty fun and give you a little bit of experience on how something like this might be done. So let's get started. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. So first off, we have all these methods inside this user class. Don't worry about all of them. Basically, we're just creating utility methods to print users, and now I wanna add another utility method. And by utility method, I just mean it does something. I don't know why I'm calling it that, but <laughs> essentially, we're just associating this with the user class because it deals with users. It's just a way to organize it. So we'll just say public static and we're actually gonna make this return an integer, which will be the index at which the user was found. And this is going to take a list of type user, and we'll just call it users. Now what we're gonna do is we're just going to iterate through each of the users in this list. So for each user, user in users, what are we gonna do? we are going to do a comparison essentially. So not only will we take in the list as an argument, we're also going to take in, let's just, uh, what do we wanna compare by? Let's just compare by full name. So we'll just take a string and we'll call it full name. And again, this is a static method, so it has nothing to do with an individual object of type user. So we can't just go grab full name directly. That's not possible because this is not static. This is static, you can't really mix the two. So we just create a string to store that information. So when we call this, we'll just pass in the string, do, do some comparisons down here, and if it's found, we'll return it. You can decide how to compare. In this situation, I'm just gonna assume if the full name matches, they're the same entity, but that's up to you. You might wanna check for something a little bit more unique, such as an email, DNA sequence or whatever it might be. So what we'll just do is say if user.fullName is equal to full name, so this is the argument passed in, and this is the property of the user in the list right here. If they're equal, we're just going to return user. Oh crap. How do we get the index? We actually can't easily return the index here with this for each loop. So I'm going to turn this into a for loop. It's really simple. And we can pretty much do the same thing. So I'm just gonna cut this and paste it here. Get rid of the for each. Now the only thing that we're gonna have to change is rather than working with the user directly, we're actually going to have to index the list. So we'll say users index i dot full name. Then all we have to do is return i. And we're getting an issue. Not all code paths return a value. So to fix that outside of the for loop, we can just say return negative one. So if we go through all the users and none of them match, we'll just return basically a flag to say it wasn't found. We could use negative 300. It's up to you. I just choose negative one. It's very common for something like this. All right, let's invoke this, see how it works. So let's go into our program. We'll create a couple other users. All right, so we created three users. Now let's create that list. There we go. And then all we gotta do is you could say users.add and put each one of these in here or initialization syntax. You can actually just go in here and say user, user two and user three. So yeah, that's a little shortcut for you guys. Now all we gotta do is say users.find, and what are we gonna pass in? We're gonna pass in a string. So what are we looking for? Let's say we're trying to find chip. 
So since we only passed in a first name, the last name's gonna be null, so we don't really have to worry about that. But, mm, here's a gotcha. Inside of our class, inside of the, the full name, we say first name plus a space plus last name. If last name's null, we're gonna have first name and a space. So in order to match, hmm, you have to put that space in there. So that's a little weakness in my code, but it's, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, not only do we pass in the string, but we also need to pass in the list so we can just say users, comma, chip. No overload for method f oh, uh. Okay, so we're getting an error as you can see here, and that's because we're calling it on this users list. So the list class has a method called find, which you can search for an element. So this is probably the method you would use to search within the list. But if we want to use our custom method we just created, which was defined inside that user class, we actually need to use a capital U. So we're calling a static method. Get rid of that S. We're calling the class static method find. Hmm. There we go. And this is going to return that integer, so we can just console log it. Like so. And run this noob. See what we get. Oh, we got a negative one. It wasn't found. Oh, I fell for this again. You need to make sure you're actually assigning to the right variable here. That's why it's dangerous to number these variables because it's so easy to assign to the wrong one. Okay, let's try this again. And we get a one. Index one, which makes sense. The first one's Caleb, next one's Chip. So index zero, index one. Awesome, if we put something that's nonsense that doesn't actually go in there, we'll see what happens. And you can see we get a negative one. So that's how you build your own custom find method. Again, there's probably solutions out there to make this a lot easier, but I wanted to show you the custom code of how you would do something like this. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Hopefully it was helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.